Though remarkably sensitive and accurate, the human eye is an extremely limited device, a surprisingly narrow window on our world. In the fragile film of a soap bubble lies a normally unseen realm, a miniature liquid kaleidoscope too small for our eyes to see. Vivid detail is also hidden within an instant of time. Many events are simply too fast to be seen with the unaided eye. When time is compressed, once motionless sights magically come to life. A voracious army of fire ants devours a helpless cricket. It is an awesome day-long process too slow for us to notice. Beyond the spectrum of visible light lie strange and extraordinary sights, images created with forms of energy which elude the naked eye. before, cameras and other instruments that see are radically expanding the limits of our vision and knowledge and altering forever our image of the world. Join us now on a visual journey beyond the limits of the naked eye, on a voyage into the invisible world. We are visual creatures, reliant on our eyes as our primary link with the world. Able at a glance to estimate size, measure depth, register movement, make sudden shifts in focus, and instantly distinguish a million different colors, our eyes are the most highly developed of all living species. Yet despite our eyes' amazing powers and remarkable versatility, there are infinite sights around us to which we are totally blind. If our vision is expanded beyond its normal bounds, a whole new world of experience suddenly unfolds. Through the specialized eyes of cameras come new dimensions of seeing. Fleeting movement hidden by time, details shrouded by distance and size are revealed as vivid images which our eyes alone could never discern. camera must often come to the aid of our blinkered sense of sight. 
what thousands of eyes have witnessed firsthand, we must rely on a camera to actually see. Possessed with powers to reveal the world in myriad ways that our unaided eyes cannot, cameras and other imaging tools are extending enormously the limited reach of our vision, probing once distant and unimagined realms that lie hidden all around us. We delight in exploring the world we can see, but even up close, our eyes can barely resolve objects that are one three hundredths of an inch in diameter, a fraction the size of a tiny grain of sand. What seems very small in human scale is but the threshold of a microcosm beyond the limits of our eyes. In a tiny drop of water, a bounty of life too small to see. Like spaceships from an alien world, delicate creatures called plankton silently maneuver through their seemingly boundless universe. Completely unknown until the invention of the microscope some 400 years ago, the discovery of plankton and other microlife provoked unparalleled wonder. When seen for the first time, it was difficult to believe that living things could be so small that a single drop of water could contain a miniature world. Indispensable tools of science, modern microscopes fitted with cameras can now easily recapture the sights that were seen when man first glimpsed the microworld. Bacteria. Discovered in 1674, their tiny size and great abundance seemed nearly inconceivable. A slice of leaf revealed a complex structure of tiny living cells, which no one had dreamed existed. Blood was seen to be composed of millions of free-floating corpuscles. The sight of a cell dividing seemed a miracle of nature, another astounding discovery which would help to lay the foundations of modern biology and medicine. With a microscope that filters the direction of incoming light, the composition of the physical world can be vividly explored. When a liquid transforms into a solid, as when water turns to ice, the tiny crystals that will form its structure organize into shape. Recorded on film at actual speed, we can witness the otherwise invisible process known as crystallization.
Seeing with a beam of electrons rather than with light, a powerful new instrument called the scanning electron microscope has penetrated an uncharted level of detail and size. For David Scharf, a researcher and photographer, it is a means to explore a whole new world of inner space. Though we seem to be leaving some distant planet's surface, our voyage, in fact, is much more contained. The cratered terrain we have left behind is the surface of a moon rock the size of a grain of sand. The fragile structure of an alyssum flower is barely visible to the eye. In the vacuum chamber of the microscope, a focused beam of electrons will be aimed across the flower's surface to form a magnified image. Through the microscope's probing eye, the tiny flower reveals a delicate structure of unexpected complexity. When magnified more than 20,000 times, we can see single grains of pollen If we spy a little closer on the intimate places we know, we might come to feel like strangers in our own familiar world. Zigzags of rough-hewn channels gouged into a surface are a magnified view of the narrow grooves in an ordinary phonograph record. This barren, rutted terrain is not as remote as it seems. It is the porous surface of the tip of a ballpoint pen. A tangled network of sinuous fibers, when enlarged 4,000 times, hardly resembles what we usually see as a smooth sheet of writing paper. the sofas and beds of even our best-kept homes, microscopic dust mites quietly live their lives. Like miniature dinosaurs from a long-lost world, their bodies rarely grow large enough for the naked eye to see. Dependent on us for survival, dust mites feed primarily on the flakes of dead skin which our bodies constantly shed. What at first sight appears to be a crude medieval machine is actually a precision instrument nearly all of us depend on. Its roughly chiseled surface offers little clue that this clumsy contraption is actually the complex movement of an ordinary wristwatch. Our skin itself hides a miniature world from the normal view of our eyes. When seen at high magnification, an alien landscape appears. Stubbles of hair grow like tree stumps in a terrain whose complex ecology supports a wide variety of life. On almost any strand of hair, tiny fungi can be found. In numerous forms, their population on our hair and skin numbers in the tens of thousands. Our intimate fellow travelers, fungi have lived with us through evolution to establish a permanent niche in the habitat of our skin. In the roots of everyone's eyelashes live tiny mites called Demodex funicularum. 
Apparently, they cause us no harm. But why they are there, and exactly what they do, have yet to be discovered. The varied micro-landscapes on the surface of our bodies can also fall prey to less desirable guests. Meet Pediculus humanus capitus, the head louse, a tiny and bothersome pest which lives its life firmly attached to a single strand of hair. Sarcoptus scabii, the scabies mite, is a microscopic creature that makes a comfortable home by burrowing directly into the skin. On the warm, moist regions of our skin, there is life in enormous abundance. Bacteria, the simplest form of free living life, are constantly with us. A single bacterium can multiply to more than a million in about eight hours. And no matter how much we wash, millions remain on our skin. Each of us is the keeper of a huge, invisible zoo. In fact, at any given time, there are as many creatures on our bodies as there are people on Earth. If our numerous companions do not inspire our love, at least we have the consolation of knowing that we are never completely alone. At the Enrico Fermi Institute of the University of Chicago, a new frontier of the micro world has recently been bridged. Using a powerful electron microscope which took 14 years to develop, Dr. Albert Crewe has captured on film what no one had ever seen. You are looking at atoms, uranium atoms. The smaller single specks are individual atoms, each with a diameter of only a few billionths of an inch. The larger masses are clusters of several atoms. Colorized artificially to enhance our view, atoms exhibit unpredicted movement, revealing that solid objects, when seen on an atomic scale, are actually a sea of moving particles. The level of magnification of the, the movies on a, a home TV screen is about 10 million, maybe 20 million, depending on the size of your TV set. That's about equivalent to blowing a basketball up to, to the size of the Earth. The ability to see single atoms, to isolate them uh, at that level, could have considerable importance. Where it will lead is, a, is, is very difficult to say, except what we have is a, a new technology, a new way of looking at materials in the world. And every time you have a new way of looking at things, you find out something new. We are exiled from other worlds by time as well as by size. In a world of motion, there is infinite detail too fast for the unaided eye. In the 1870s, an ingenious photographer, Edward Mybridge, invented a way to record movements normally too quick to be seen. A wager about the stride of a running horse brought Mybridge to the stock farm of a wealthy Californian. With a battery of 24 cameras that were activated by threads stretched across a track, Mybridge captured aspects of motion that had never been witnessed before. Mybridge's patron had bet that all four legs of a running horse were sometimes simultaneously off the ground. Stop action photography proved him to be right. By projecting his photographs in rapid succession, the first motion pictures were born. 
the movement of people as well as animals became for Mybridge a passionate subject of study. Much more than just a technical curiosity, Mybridge's pioneering work was the first photographic analysis of the dynamics of physical motion. Today, modern high-speed cameras can record rapid motion with a clarity that Edward Mybridge could only have dreamed of. Slow motion film is now a commonplace tool in analyzing athletic performance. For Dr. Gideon Ariel, a physical education expert and a former discus thrower on the Israeli Olympic team, slow motion film is just the first step in the scientific coaching of athletes. Dr. Ariel has turned to the computer for aid in the analysis of movement. Slow motion film of an athlete is projected frame by frame onto a recording screen. Each touch of a sonic pen transmits into the computer memory the dynamically changing positions of the athlete's joints and limbs. Human movement is governed by the same laws of motion that apply to the entire physical world. And from the visual information contained in the film, the computer can rapidly calculate the interrelationship of force, acceleration, and velocity in the athlete's movements. Computer-created images combined with a mass of numerical data can pinpoint where athletic technique is hindering performance. So what coaches in the past thought they can see with the eyes, we're finding out you cannot do. You have to quantify it. With the advent of computers, we can provide the coaches with much more objective, reliable information on how the body moves. Dr. Ariel's computer analysis of Olympic discus thrower, Mac Wilkins, revealed that useful energy which would affect his throw was being wasted on ground friction. Additional force was being spent by not rigidly planting his forward leg at the moment of the throw. Based on this analysis, Wilkins altered his throwing technique. Several months later, in international competition, he threw the discus over 13 feet farther than he ever had before and set a new world record. In a remarkable laboratory at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, time and motion are dramatically dissected. With the aid of a pulsating strobe light, Dr. Harold Edgerton can freeze a flurry of movement onto a single plate of film. Dr. Edgerton developed the strobe light in 1931. Unable to see how electric motors behaved when they rotated at various speeds, he designed a light which could flash so quickly and brightly that motion seemed to stop. Now, we're going to uh, do an experiment here to take a picture of a bullet, a very high-velocity bullet, as it cuts this playing card in two. The playing card will be attached to this tape, 
the bullet will come out of the gun at 2,800 feet per second. It, if we aim it correctly, it'll cut through the card. And we want to turn on a light, a very special strobe light, that lasts less than a millionth of a second in order to stop the bullet effectively on the film, make a sharp, clear uh, photograph. The sound of the bullet will trigger the strobe light, which creates an image on film. A first shot will test Dr. Edgerton's aim. There we go. Now, the event as the strobe light reveals it. Less than a millionth of a second is permanently frozen in time. Another striking example of the strobe's revealing power is what Edgerton calls making applesauce. Perhaps the most dramatic of Dr. Edgerton's visual techniques combines the powerful strobe light with a high-speed motion picture camera. There you go. All set. Three, two, one, shoot! Stretching events thousands of times reveals invisible detail that can be seen and studied in no other way. The explosion of a firecracker now slowed down 1,200 times. Examine the plop of a milk drop 200 times slower than usual. And it becomes a magical vision of hydrodynamic behavior. Unbounded by our human sense of time, specialized cameras can also record events much too slow to see. For nature cinematographer Ken Middleham, the technique of time-lapse photography provides a fascinating window on an otherwise hidden realm. By taking single photographs at longer than normal intervals, time and events are compressed into a dramatic new scale. The two weeks it takes for an orange to spoil are telescoped into several seconds. A bunch of unripened bananas mature before our eyes. The natural world is alive in ways we cannot see, constantly in the process of incredible transformation. Over a period of days, tiny worms devour the leaf of the tree. An apple provides a week-long meal for dozens of hungry grubs.
In only four days, a dead field mouse is consumed by a mass of maggots. From the unstoppable process of decay, there inevitably springs new life in full and beautiful abundance. Passage of years is not a barrier for the time lapse camera. In less than half a minute, a boy can grow from four to twenty and then return again to childhood. Our eyes perceive the world only in the language of light. Yet light, visible light, is but a narrow slice of energy contained within an infinite spectrum of electromagnetic waves that constantly vibrate all around us. When scientists analyze light, breaking it apart into its component wavelengths, the familiar rainbow of colors from red to violet appears. Colors are the brain's code for the wavelengths of light we can see. Beyond this band of energy, our naked eyes go blind. The world around us hides numerous sights from our limited light-sensitive eyes. By equipping a camera with a sensitive filter, we can see the world reflected in ultraviolet light, the invisible wavelengths of energy beyond the color violet. In the 1930s, scientists discovered that honeybees have a visual sensitivity that extends beyond our own. On its daily search for nectar, the bee can sense its surroundings in ultraviolet light. Some flowers we see as solidly colored have a very different appearance to the bee. When viewed in ultraviolet light, new shadings and patterns appear. Helping to guide the bee to nectar and pollen, ultraviolet markings hidden from our eyes have been discovered on numerous flowers. Unseen ultraviolet rays stream abundantly from the sun, but they are only one kind of invisible light that we must rely on cameras to reveal. We see the light of a burning match, but an image of its heat eludes us. If our eyes could see the part of the spectrum where red light turns to infrared or heat, our view of the world would suddenly take on a new and expanded scope. A technique called Schlieren photography 
allows us to see heat energy that constantly flows all around us. A valuable new tool in medicine, super-sensitive infrared cameras can detect slight variations in skin temperature, which often signal early warnings of cancerous tumors and other diseases. Each color represents a one-half degree difference in temperature. Red areas are the warmest, blue the coolest. To a doctor's trained eye, the body's varied heat patterns show a wealth of vital diagnostic information once hidden from his view. By photographing a subject with visible light, only the outer surface details are recorded by the camera. Using another form of energy, invisible to the eye, we can penetrate solid matter and create an image on film. Discovered in 1895, X-rays were briefly considered by some to be a threat to feminine modesty. However, fears were laid at first sight of the image, and the X-ray was quickly put to use as a valuable new tool of medicine. Today, the power of the X-ray is expanding our knowledge of the past. When fragile Egyptian mummies are subjected to modern X-ray analysis, scientists gain new insight into their little-known culture and lives. What time and wrappings have hidden, X-rays can still reveal. X-rays of Yuya, a royal advisor, show obvious dental disease. Fuya, his wife, suffered painfully from arthritis and a badly curved spine. The infant Pediamon received a less than noble burial. His arms were amputated and his legs were broken to fit an undersized coffin. For an unidentified mummy, a less desirable fate. Legs are intact, but the torso is mysteriously missing. Pharaoh Amenhotep I, X-raying directly through his beautifully preserved coffin, reveals that his body had been damaged by ancient grave robbers and repaired by priests five centuries later. Perhaps no pharaoh is better known than the young King Tutankhamun. Penetrating rays show that his golden mask was constructed in several parts. His beard was added last, attached to the chin by a tapered peg. The body of King Tut itself has undergone careful analysis in hopes of finding evidence as to the cause of the young pharaoh's death. X-rays, however, show a young man in good health. And unless there is evidence still to be discovered, the reason for Tut's early death may remain forever a mystery. Sound, like light or heat or X-rays, radiates all around us in the form of vibrating waves. This image of a human hand was made with high-frequency sound. Using this technique, doctors can now see soft internal tissue that was not safely accessible before.
Sensitive sound imaging cameras are today revolutionizing prenatal care. Okay, I'm just gonna get one quick look. A tiny developing fetus can be seen and monitored during growth in the womb. Seen here in profile, its head on the top right, the fetus arches its back and stretches. It hiccups, then moves its arm and slightly turns its head. The baby's now sort of turned around and it's looking at us to see what we're doing. I can take a picture of the baby for you. I'll put the freeze frame, which freezes the image for us. Today, a mother's first baby picture is often made with sound before the child is born. It's pretty good. See there, baby's head. But everything else looks fine. Baby's moving around a lot. Baby's heart is beating fine. And you have a normal amount of amniotic fluid for this time. Hmm? Who's it look like? You or Brad? I think it looks like me. <laughs> A striking means of photography discovered at the turn of the century shows apparent fields of energy emanating from our bodies. It is known as curlium or electrophotography, and almost everything filmed with this technique shows an active surrounding aura. Controversial and only partially understood, Curlian photography is now undergoing serious investigation as a possible diagnostic tool. To make a Curlian photograph, a finger is placed over a sheet of unexposed film, which receives a burst of electricity from a metal plate beneath it. When the film is developed, the Curlian aura appears. Dr. Thelma Moss has conducted research on Curlian photography at UCLA. People are always asking, what is this Curlian photography all about? And the answer is, nobody really knows. But we've got some ideas that are intriguing to us because they are not the conventional ideas about what exists around the human body. We believe that not only is there air surrounding us, but that we are emanating something from ourselves that is energetic, bioenergetic, if you like, and that tells us a great deal about what's going on inside the body. Curly and fingertip images taken over several hours vary their intensity as a depressant drug takes effect. A mild stimulating drug seems to cause an activating pattern. These Curlian photographs record the sequence of a woman's monthly menstrual cycle. A yogi's hands before and then during a state of deep concentration. Though powerfully evocative, the meaning and value of the Curlian image still remains largely unknown. With further research, it may prove to be a new frontier of our knowledge. At the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory near Chicago, we are being brought ever closer to an ultimate frontier. With huge exotic equipment, scientists are working to better see and understand the smallest possible particles of which all matter is made. Only 25 years ago, atoms composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons were regarded as the smallest basic objects. Today, it seems that atoms are built of even tinier things called quarks. Fermilab is, in a sense, the world's largest and most powerful microscope, an awesome collection of machinery designed to shatter atoms to pieces and see the objects within. 
Buried underground, a four-mile ring of powerful magnets guides a narrow beam of particles, which is rapidly accelerated. When fired at their target, they will act like a powerful hammer to break an atom apart. The process begins with a giant generator and a massive jolt of power. Hurled within seconds to nearly the speed of light, the beam of particles is aimed to strike the tiny nuclei of atoms. The collision will be photographed by several sensitive cameras. When projected onto an analyzing table, the resulting pictures show the scattered tracks left by hundreds of liberated subatomic particles. Each type of particle has its own distinguishing signature of curving or spinning lines. By carefully recording and studying these trails, we are gradually learning more about the now smallest and most elusive units of matter, the still unseen entities called quarks. Quarks, however, may well be composed of even smaller things. We still do not know where, or if ever, the world of the small will stop. High above the Sonoran Desert, near Tucson, Arizona, the Kitt Peak National Observatory is focusing our vision onto the realm of the very large. The world's biggest collection of astronomical instruments, Kitt Peak is dominated by the 19-story dome of the powerful Mayall Telescope. Like most modern optical telescopes, it is really a colossal camera with which to photograph the sky. Galaxies. Only 60 years ago, their existence was just a theory. But with the construction of larger and larger telescopes, thousands were seen and photographed. Today, astronomers estimate that the universe contains at least 100 billion galaxies, each with 100 billion stars. Powerful instruments like the Mayall Telescope are now seeing the heavens more clearly than has ever been possible. Its light collecting mirror can photographically detect objects more than six million times fainter than the unaided eye can see. Astronomers today rarely look through a telescope directly. An array of computers and image intensifiers record and make visible objects that the eye alone is not sensitive enough to see. Artificial colorizing shows subtle details that would otherwise be missed. Revealed on the telescope's computer enhancement screen, the world's first image of the surface of a star other than our sun. Known as Betelgeuse, it lies 600 light years from Earth. The computer colored contrasts on its surface are believed to be huge regions of varying hot and cold. Resolving this image through the telescope was like photographing a grain of sand from several miles away. Probing ever deeper into the enormity of the sky, the powerful eye of the telescope is extending our horizons toward the limits of space and time. From this exploration, new and astonishing sights are offering clues to such baffling questions as, what are stars? How do galaxies form? Does the universe have an end? At the Salt Lake City campus of the University of Utah, 
a frontier of vision that was once as remote as the darkness of outer space, has now been dramatically entered. Craig has been totally blind for 15 years. But in a bold experiment, doctors have surgically implanted on the visual cortex of his brain an array of 64 tiny electrodes. This ingenious feat of medical engineering allows Craig to be literally plugged in to the outside world. Bypassing his useless eyes and optic nerves, doctors can send images in the form of electrical signals directly to the visual center of his brain. Okay, Craig, that's fine. You can put your head up now. For Craig, it is a strange new contact with his long lost sense of sight. When Craig was linked to a television camera, he reported seeing both vertical and horizontal lines. In this experiment, a computer system will generate patterns of dots representing the Braille alphabet. It is the same six dot code used in touch Braille. The images that Craig sees will appear something like this. Go. First word. I. Okay. H. A. D. And. A. C. A. T. Cat. A N D and Craig has little trouble seeing the letters that will form a sentence, a but scientists are working toward even more yeah. dramatic goals. I had a cat and ball. Researchers now foresee a day when a miniaturized system, including cameras for the eyes, electronics in the glasses, and electrodes on the brain, will provide artificial vision for the blind. In the time it takes to blink an eye, cameras can transport us to wondrous new realms, revealing once hidden places that span from the reaches of outer space to the inner depths of nature. The magic eyes of cameras are dramatically transforming our knowledge and perception. In coming years, our vision of the world will be stretched to newer boundaries. For today, we have only begun to explore the invisible worlds all around us.